end up at the end of the street at the Jerome Grand Hotel. The Jerome Grand Hotel is a uh, uh, hotel that was once a hospital, uh, United Verde Hospital. Back in 1926 to 1950, it operated. And then in uh, 1950, it shut its doors. For 40 years, it sat vacant until a family in 1994 bought the, ho bought the uh, hospital and turned it into a hotel. Now, with this being said, here we are without audio on our camera for some reason. Uh, one of those glitches that happens with uh, ghost hunting every now and then. These things happen. Batteries go dead. Microphones die. And here we are, me dubbing over what was once uh, a very good day. So here we are at the elevator. The elevator is where Claude Harvey, one of the uh, uh, maintenance people in 1935, where he died. Uh, if you remember on Ghost Adventures, and, uh, 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 Zach uh, put his head behind the uh, uh, elevator shaft and the elevator was coming down and almost killed him. Well, that's where Claude Harvey died. He had his skull and his uh, head crushed. Here we are on the elevator and I'm asking John what happened when we got there. And John's explaining to me that when, it, when we arrived, one of the first things that happened when we got out of the uh, uh, car was that we heard a growl. It wasn't a growl from an animal. It was at, it, it was paranormal. Uh, I can never explain to you how it felt to hear that growl. It was scary. It uh, made me think of demonic uh, possession and almost made me turn around. But we're here to ghost hunt and uh, not to play with demons. So we went on into the hotel. This is the Grand Suite. The Grand Suite is the largest room in the hotel. The Grand Suite is operating room and nursery of the uh, old United Verde Hospital. Now, back Some in other the uh, first uh, year that they operated the nursery, it got so busy they had to move it upstairs. So it became all operating rooms then. And you'll notice when you walk through the suite, which is, as I said, the largest uh, suite uh, in the hotel, it still has the doors, uh, the doors that swing open just like hospitals today um, into each uh, individual bedroom and, and into the suite itself. There's a double door system, which we'll show you here in a minute. But um, when you go into this, uh, this operating room set of suites, it's quite interesting to see how they transformed that operating room into a beautiful suite. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, these people really did a good job on this hotel and uh, kudos to them. But once again, here we are walking through to the kitchen area, going into the living room area. That's their ghost gear. Uh, when you look at it, that's just for one uh, ghost hunt and we have a lot of gear. Uh, we like to catch things and we like to make sure that you get informed. Now, here are the double doors that I was talking about. If you look, you walk into this uh, separate, separate section of the suite, and it has a media room, another bedroom. This is the old nursery area, actually. Um, this is uh, a comfortable area to be in. And you don't feel any negative vibes or negative energy. It's uh, real comfortable to be. Here you have a bedroom. This bedroom is well, uh, well uh, decorated, just as the other. Uh, faces out towards the uh, hotel lobby. Uh, then you have the bathroom. Now it's interesting. This bathroom is still set up just like it was when it was a hospital. Um, and if you look at this drain, you can only imagine all the blood and and whatnot that uh, drained down that drain from the operating room when they do all these different. Um, uh, you know, limb, uh, taking limbs and things of that nature. Uh, it was quite, uh, quite normal back then to do so because they didn't have ways to keep infection away. So this is how they did it. Here we are demonstrating the double door system just like you would if you walked in any uh, operating room uh, today. Uh, although they put French doors in uh, at this, uh, this uh, hotel, but it used to be double doors. Uh, you have these doors here. John's demonstrating how these doors close, just like if you were in an operating room today. Opening up for the cart to come through. 
puck comes through, goes into the second set, into the operating suite, and we know what happens after that. Now, we ghost hunt the living room area uh, because it is a central area. It is a place where you feel an incredible amount of energy, and you'll see as we go forward all the different types of things that uh, this uh, living room area uh, provided for us paranormal-wise. When you look out this window, you see the valley. It's beautiful. You've got uh, Sedona out in the uh, distance. Uh, you've got the Grand Canyon. You've got uh, Jerome, which is a mile high up in the air. Um, you know, here's John demonstrating a couple of our uh, uh, cameras. Uh, these cameras are motion sensitive. They take pictures. Uh, we usually use them in cemetery areas and places where we're just trying to catch an apparition. Uh, John had an issue, uh, an apparition that he found. If you go to our website, you'll see. Um, a picture of what John found were ghostly mist that came into his room, room 37, went around and sat on a, a table, a, a chair, a chair and table. Paranormal event. I will uh, tell you that these static cams are real helpful when you're using uh, an outside area or some form of uh, area where you want to just find an apparition. These work great because they're motion sensitive, they uh, are infrared, and they work fantastic. So if you don't have them, you need to get some. So John is staying in room 37A. 37A is uh, right next to 37B. 37B being one of the most haunted uh, rooms in the hotel. Um, we didn't come here to uh, ghost hunt 37B or 37A, though John's staying in 37A. And we're going to uh, set up some cameras and whatnot in there. And that he will be doing here in a moment. And we will head on down the hall and uh, get those cameras installed. There we go. John's an experienced investigator, but this is his first experience at the Jerome Grand Hotel. Remember, you, uh, what you probably aren't aware of is that the Jerome Grand Hotel, formerly the United Alberti Hospital, had over 9,000 deaths in it uh, from the years that it operated. And that being said, there are a lot of spirit activity here. The energy is high, and every room has some form of paranormal uh, story that goes with it. This is 37A, beautiful suite once again. Formerly, this was the mental ward. Um, this here opens up to the outside, and it has a beautiful patio. And John's explaining right here, right now, where the ghost sat at that chair and uh, looked at him. Um, and uh, you can go to our website, www.paranormalinvestigatorsnumber4nu.com to see the picture. Now, as John describes that, we're now going to move on in to the uh, cameras and the setup for that. And here we go, showing you how these cameras are set up in the dark um, and how the infrared will work when uh, approached. So that's the static cameras. Um, very useful on the tools. So, now, we're heading out onto the patio. This is the patio that they used to wheel the um, uh, ward patients out to and let them sit there to get some fresh air. Because remember, there was no air conditioning in the, the hotel back then uh, or in the hospital. So, the only way to really cool down was to go out on the balcony. Many of the rooms had balconies. Many of them had suicides uh, as well from people jumping off the balconies. Uh, room 32, uh, right next to our suite, Grand Suite, ha is known to be one of the most uh, haunted rooms in the uh, Grand Hotel. So, so John, John's setting up the cameras right it, now. Uh, uh, John's a technological wizard and, and he loves doing this kind of stuff, so we're allowing him to do it. And so. uh, with that, uh, 
I think we got audio. I think once we get past that, we're set to go. Good deal. Okay. We're about two hours into setup, three hours into setup, and incredible things have been going on with the uh, um, cameras and uh, what we're catching in this one bedroom. Um, orbs that just cannot be discounted. There's some meaning to their movement, and um, John uh, set up all the cameras. Uh, you had a, a feeling just now. Well, why don't you describe what that was? Um, just a feeling of sadness. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I kept on feeling my hair standing up and just felt really sad. It was okay. weird. And I called you, you know, and then it just went away. Huh. Just weird. It's uh, this operating room, uh, the uh, suite um, now, has got an energy about it that one can only describe as being um, electric. Uh, it, it gives you this feeling of, um, I don't know, like just that raw emotion. Um, it's hard to describe. So we're still in setup. Uh, we've got two cameras here and here in the main living room set up. These are static cameras. These are cameras that are uh, coaxial cable and give 720 uh, uh, resolution and are infrared. Now we have in the bedroom I was talking about where orbs are being seen. Uh, we have that camera set up and it's just incredible the activity we're getting in that room. So we'll be back. Here in the Jerome Grand Suite at the Jerome Grand Hotel, we've had some incredible, incredible activity. Orbs, um, footsteps, growling, just uh, a plethora of uh, paranormal activity. More to come. These are our static cams. We have them located in different areas throughout the uh, uh, suite. And you'll notice every now and then something, an orb, will fly through. The thing is, is that they have a specific um, uh, pattern that they follow. It's it's not like it was dust falling. Um, dust doesn't go sideways like that. It doesn't stop midair and move the other direction. Um, it's rather interesting to watch. So John, you, um, you've been watching the camera. We're just about to start the investigation, but pre-investigation uh, um, monitoring, you, you saw something. What was that? Um, I saw an orb coming from the bottom, going to the top, uh, in front of the coffee table, and um, it was large enough, it was like twice the size of the normal orbs, and it caused the motion detector to go off as well. Interesting. Well, I say that we do an EVP session in there, we check it out, and we see if we can't get anything. I agree wholeheartedly. Okay. You sit on the couch. Okay, what we're doing now is an EVP session. That's um, an uh, electronic voice health phenomenon. Uh, we have uh, stereo recorders that we utilize to uh, do this. Um, and what we do is we... Can you turn those lights off? Yes. What we do is we basically just uh, we start the recorder. This is a high definition recorder. Um, and we ask questions and we see if we get any results. We've had a lot of activity in this room so we feel like we have a good chance at a good EVP. Here we go. 
We're here at the Grand, uh, Grand Jerome, uh, Jerome Grand Hotel in the Grand Suite. And we've noticed a lot of you orbs are, uh, are in here. Um, if your spirits, if you could say something to us and let us know what, what your name is, we'd like that. What, can one of you say what your name is? How long have you been here? Why don't you leave? If you're here, can you make a noise or a sound? Let us know some with some audible um, happening that lets us know that you're here. Can you bang on a door, bang on something, close the door, open the door? <clears throat> If you're here, make a noise. Did you die at this uh, hospital when it was a hospital? Do you want to say something to us? If you'd like us to stop, all you have to do is tell us to, to uh, stop. We're in no way here to harm you. We just like to communicate with you. If you'd say your name, If you can say my name, or you can say my brother's name. That that was uh that was quite uh, interesting. Um, while talking and uh, asking for EVP uh, uh, proof, um, our walkie-talkies went off. Um, now that could be from somebody being on the channel, but it just seems uh, a little more of a coincidence that it happened in the process of doing an EVP, but uh, certainly scared me. If, if that was you trying to communicate with us, please say something on the voice recorder. If you're unable to speak, Please knock or make some type of noise. We do thank you for any communication you tried to give us. If there's anything you'd like to say, please say it.
<coughs> okay, I'm going to end this EVP session and uh, we'll go back to monitoring things. And thank you for um, anything you did or did not say. Operating room noises to happen within the uh, uh, suite itself at night. Now you'll hear that in this uh, EB in this video. You'll hear uh, sounds like a gurney going uh, uh, down the hall. Sounds like things being shuffled around and moved. There's no one in the room right now, so what you hear is what it is. Um, now, also when I was in the room, I I thought there was somebody upstairs. Well, come to find out, there is no upstairs. Uh, so, hearing gurneys moving around upstairs was quite interesting as well. So, listen and enjoy.
We're here at the Grand Hotel, Grand Room, and John is with the uh, heat-seeking device called the Floor Camera, and is checking for any abnormalities or heat sources or cold spots that may uh, lead us to finding a ghost. Seems like this. I'll do this. Let me show you something. Is there a wall there? That's the door. That's the door? Yeah. Where? Oh. Okay. Now look at it. Yeah. I can see the green. You can see my hand? Yeah. The green. Okay, I'm going to go in the scary room. Okay, let's head that way. Some temperatures. Go on. If there's anybody in here, please lay on the bed or sit somewhere on the bed where we'd have a reading, please. Once again, would you please touch the bed, sit on the bed? Okay, thank you.